<laughs> Makes me think of Prince there actually a little bit. <laughs> I don't know what it who it is. It's just on uh, Streamyard, but I kind of like it because it introduces everybody. Everyone gets in the mood for Deborah <laughs> and and her guest. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's so good to see you. We've got Hogart here. It's so fun. Hello, everyone. I've got Bora Bora and Cat Mama. Cat Mama is here. Bora Bora greeting us. That's wonderful. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. I've got, I'm going to put, um, I'm going to grill Hogarth today. <laughs> We're going to see him on the grill. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. And there, and there has been some questions about asking questions, but I've got something else in mind for a little while. And if, and if he gets bored of this, then we'll answer questions. And of course, someone I'll be keeping an eye on uh, the questions to see if something else is coming up for you on a personal level. Miss, thank you so much for coming in, Hogart. A pleasure. Thank you yes. uh, so much uh, for having me on your channel. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it, it's great. Well done. And uh, it's obviously doing well and growing and stuff like that. So it is growing. Doesn't, yeah. It doesn't happen, doesn't happen for everyone, you know, so you, you've done right. really, really well. Oh, thank you so much. I had a... I had a reading with Kogarth um, at the beginning of when I started this channel, which was the uh, middle of last year. Right. And uh, he said, go for it. And I said, okay. And I did. And here we are. <laughs> so I'm celebrating you today, Hogarth. Thank you so Thank much you. for, for you. shining the light on this. I could see it in your it. chart as well. I could see it in your chart. I can't remember how we got onto the subject, but I think I was saying something, oh, you know, you should maybe do something with YouTube. And you were like, well, actually, you, you know, know. Yeah, it was more like I need to know. I can, Actually, I brought the question to you because you? I'm, um, I'm up there and you, you reach – you reach a time in your life when you just don't want to start something something that's not going to catch fire. I'm sorry, I'm running out of time, man. And it and uh, with YouTube, it takes a lot of uh, chop wood, carry water, trying to figure out what mm -hmm. to do next, and all the clicks. And um, he, you said go for it, so I did, and it's come out. Look at all these beautiful people in our room. It's just wonderful. Thank you so much for coming in. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, now I have some questions for you. Sure. And sure. I know one of them, I don't want to forget to ask you, but you do private readings, of course, and I want to make mm -hmm. sure I have that information before we sign off so people know how sure. to, um, to get a hold of you. And sure. I can't, you have done, as so I've been following you, of course, and you have done some things that have just dazzled me, like you read, um, you read some of the cards a little different than me, not that it's wrong or right or anything but we have different relationships with the card the basic yeah. meaning is there of course all the but but i just love the way you present and i'm going to do more of that with in my channel i'll copy you a little bit oh. where you show the cards and how it goes to the other card and everything i just love that and um Thank you. and so, so then i thought i'd ask a few questions of you because sure. you're sure. You, yeah so the very first question i want to know is what on earth happened to draw your attention to the psychic sciences so where did that begin you know that is that's a that's a really good question and it's uh, uh so thanks for asking it and i'll say it's a foundational one well really i suppose it it goes oh oh she's vanished i want to see oh, you no. just i want to oh, showcase what? you <laughs> oh yeah what, 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 what? <laughs> You 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 vanished you vanished for 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 a minute there but but you're back. Um, okay. Yes. Yes. So so really this, this this goes back to childhood. So this is actually something um, I write about uh, write about a little bit at the beginning of my book because uh, as you know I'm working on an astrology yeah. book uh, my first astrology book Neo Vedic astrology and it's going to be out in April and I actually kind of like talk a little bit about my childhood so my mother who's sadly not with us now um she passed away a while ago back in the year 2000 my gosh which is 24 years ago now coming like up to yesterday though mm, 
yeah like, like like yesterday and she had a lot of struggles with her with her mental health throughout her life not in the last few years but uh, it was it, you know it was really challenging and it was like and it wasn't subtle either like my mother was talking and arguing with people that weren't there i mean the real kind of classic things it 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 was not subtle she was a real mm -hmm. force of nature incredibly intelligent woman but went through a lot of struggles in her life and that really impacted her mental health so when um so when i was a kid uh, growing up i didn't have much tv at all growing up not not much tv at all which i realized was probably a good thing yeah <laughs> it was a good thing because it meant i had to read and it was my mother that actually taught me how to read so i could read from a, a very young age uh, i mean literally it, i must have been three four not even joking because i remember the first book was jack and the beanstalk that's how she taught me to read so i didn't have much tv uh many things were scarce including food but there were always coloring pens and there were always books and my mother got for me the the greek mythology the ancient greek mythology so i read all of that avidly so you can imagine all the Greek myths, the Minotaur, you know, Andromeda and Perseus, uh, Demeter and Persephone, etc. I read, you know, the Iliad, Homer's journey, all of these things. And I think there was something, I can't remember which Greek myth it was, but there was this king, maybe King Manelaus, I can't remember which one. He did some wicked things. And part of his punishment from the gods was to have the Furies torment him. I don't know if you've heard of this, the Furies. <laughs> And the Furies were these characters, I can't remember whose children they were, but they would come and they would torment people and drive them to madness. Mm. And that's when the penny really dropped for me. And I was like, wow, maybe my mother's being tormented by the Furies, not because she's a bad person, but she has turmoil within her. And that's really when that journey began and when I started to explore astrology and stuff like that so i've been looking at astrology when i realized the uh, the planets were named after the gods and stuff so really that journey genuinely began when i was about eight that's really when wow. i began all of this stuff yeah so what was the first so i know what came first then it was uh learning about the greek gods and uh philosophy and then you went through this thing about your mom being tormented. Mm. Did you did you go through this, I've got to figure this out so I can save my mother thing? Or you just oh, witnessed, yeah. you're, an, uh, you're a witness to it? I, I, I would say, I would say it was a bit of both. Yeah. I, I would say it's a bit of both because if you're if any one of your primary caregivers is not well, particularly particularly as children, first of all, you know they do everything they can in their power to try and fix the scenario. Uh, and I also started reading a lot of books on psychology and stuff like that because my mother actually did have like these kind of books around. So I started to learn these concepts very young. But I remember, yeah, when I was around about eight, eight and a half, and. I remember sitting my, and it was quite a profound thought. I remember sitting myself down on the steps and there was this little skylight that came through. I remember the sunlight came through and I sat down and I was like, you know what? My mum's not well and it's not my fault. Oh, good, good. I That's mean, what for me, saved you. Yes, I, I realised it did because I was just like, it's not my fault. But what helped me get there was was the Greek mythology, was the um you know what i'd read you know up until that stage you got me i mean i'm still still young it wasn't like i was massively read but i was you know no one at primary school was reading homer's iliad let's put yeah. it that way. <laughs> except for hogarth <laughs> <laughs> uh, i love that i okay. love that did you uh, i'm going to add one here did you we as a child see ghosts or see things like or feel things um do you believe I in ghosts? It, yes, okay. uh, very much. Uh, my sister and I, because um, I've got I've got older brothers and sisters, so I, I'm the youngest um, uh, out out of them. So on my dad, on my on my mum's side, uh, two elder sisters, one elder brother. Um, so I never saw ghosts, but there were supernatural experiences. There were supernatural experiences. I remember there will be times I'd be getting ready for school and then I'll be getting ready for school. 
and get myself ready for school because kids took themselves to school back yeah, in those days. That's right. Back like, in the day. <laughs> yeah, you just you took yourself you took yourself to school, eight, yeah. nine, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. There was no being driven. I mean, some kids got driven. I took the bus. Right. And I think right, it was right. two pence or so two cents in American. Let's call wow. it that. Two cents to take the bus. And and I remember there was one time I was getting ready uh, for school and this huge waft of it was like sticking my head into um, a rose bush, you know, in full bloom. This whole scent of rose fill, filled the room. And it would happen from time to time. And then I remember telling my mum about that. I said, I can smell roses. Why, why can I smell roses? And my mum would be like, I that's think that's my friend. She yeah. was called Rose. And Rose was literally her favorite. So I would feel that. And there was other supernatural things. My mum, yeah. I, I'm sure she won't mind me saying she was a little bit of a witch. I I, I think she was. Ooh, yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like and that. I'm born at the witching hour as well, midnight. <laughs> so I'm literally nice. midnight. And you do your shows close to midnight. You're a night owl. I know. Aren't you? Everything. It's always at night and stuff like that. Mm. Oh, I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. I'm going to look at the comments to make sure I have it still going. Yep. So, um, So how soon, what was the time like between you being really interested and thirsty for the knowledge of the psychic sciences? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's study time. But then about how long did it take from that point to actually starting a business? Because you are really... From the outside looking in, it might be not the way in your room, but you look very together, measured, uh, confident. There's no hemming and hawing, or this might mean, or this. That, I mean, there's if, if it if it happens in your reading, I kind of like that. It's one of the things. Well, this might mean something, but let's continue with the reading. That's exactly what I do. Let's see what the next card says. See, and then come back to this one. Is that kind of thing? You knew you had something to offer the world a service to help people mm -hmm. find um, the right combination of words to feel successful in this life and comfortable in the life. When did that happen? How long? I mean, you oh. started young, I know, but. Good, good, good question. Um, I would say, and, and thank you as well for, for, for mm -hmm. those uh, compliments. I think in terms of say like the confidence and stuff like that, um, I think it's just through going so many going through so many ranges of different experiences mm -hmm. because people might see me and some of them think I've had this very kind of cushy life. And I really, I really haven't like my, my childhood years, teen, teen years and my twenties, they were all very, very difficult. It was tr just tremendous graft struggle. Uh, I've not really shared this publicly, but, um, twice i nearly lost the roof over my head had to go to court mm -hmm. and stuff like that and there was all sorts of you know things battles for 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 what those reasons were i've done all sorts of jobs sorts of different careers but a lot of stuff public facing so i used to work a lot in events i used to work for this very uh posh um upscale uh, caterer called rocket food i think they're still going and one thing that was really interesting is, and it was a great time. This was like like in the noughties, early 2000s, when basically employees used to compete with each other to spoil their staff the most. Imagine, yeah, that doesn't happen anymore. Yeah, <laughs> they literally used to compete, and it was it was it was fabulous. And at one point, I used to work with. Carrie Simmons. Now, many of you may not know that name, but Carrie Simmons is Boris Johnson's wife. Aha. Uh -huh. So, yeah, once upon a time, we, we used to work together back in events. She's a lovely lady, actually, lovely lady. So I did a lot of interacting, working with the, uh, with, with the public. I did a lot of, I used to manage conferences, I used to do manage theater events. I've done a lot of film work, extras work as well. In fact, one of my first jobs as a kid was in adverts and stuff like that. And I would say the um, the film work helped a lot as well because when the when the director says action, you have to do it. 
Yeah, <laughs> you have right, to do right. it. Playing your, you're not always reading lines, of course, but you get used to. It, and I found it was very good discipline um, for performing at, uh, at, as it as it were. And I think because I've had to have to have so many varied different conversations with literally thousands upon thousands of people over my life and career, I think that that is what certainly helps. And then, of course, the background reading up on all the you know the psychology the mythology mm -hmm. and these legends are are real you know they are still analogous today when i talk about persephone and demeter you know it's real like in terms of series or the planets it really helps bring in that all to life oh wow that's wonderful yeah that's one of the things when whenever i see a very accomplished uh light worker uh doing well i know that they got there through a harder path, a kind of a, uh, yeah. you, for you to be able to tolerate what's coming towards you. And we have clients that uh, present with quite unusual situations. We need to be able to meet them where they are. And it takes, it takes someone experiencing some tough times to be yeah. able to meet that person and a person, a client will know if you if you got it, <laughs> if you get them, yeah, you can't fake it. You you, you can't fake yeah. it. And very often, if people are having challenges in their life, I can often reference uh, experiences that I may have been through as well. Maybe not not exactly, not always exactly the same, but it could be analogous. And and as you know, when when you when you've gone through some trials in life, it does teach you a lot of uh, compassion and mm -hmm. uh, empathy as well for others. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you um, you do the tarot, but you also do the, is it Eastern astrology? Is there another name for that? Yes. Or so what I do is I do Neo-Vedic astrology. Neo-Vedic Neo astrology. So what is I am um, in traditional Vedic astrology, which is over 5,000 over 5, years old at minimum. Some people say really it's probably more like 10 because mm. of the first 5,000 years it was passed down in the oral tradition, but at least 5,000 years recorded. And they look at nine factors. So they look at the sun, moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. And those are called the seven grahas and it means to grip. So we're all under the grip of the planets, yeah? And then we have Rahu and Ketu, which is the north and south node of the moon, the head of the dragon and the body of the dragon. So that's nine factors, and that sets up the whole system, and that works absolutely fine on its own. But I also add the outer planets as well. So I add Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, Chiron, and Ceres, and I add those because for me, they're too important to leave out. And it is the combination of the outer planets and Ceres and Chiron that really add those extra uh, layers of meaning and stuff like that. Because the outer planets often describe the things that are unusual, the things that are strange, the things that are unconventional, the things that people don't normally talk about, particularly when it comes to Neptune. Oh, I mean, I love Neptune. Neptune is an incredible planet, but my goodness, <laughs> he can do some stuff. Yeah. So um, let me understand something. So, uh, is it is it a factor that you, you your way of doing astrology does encompass the outer planets, or did you choose to add that to what you already knew? I, I'm I'm asking this for the one reason. We are in a um, a time now in our solar system where all the outer planets are saying hello. They're coming close, and um, and they make a big difference in our energies and, uh, and for the world as, as well. But um, I was just curious if you chose to learn the outer ones or that is involved with, an, um, with your form of astrology. Uh, uh, no, I, I chose to incorporate those in. So um, what I should explain is when I started learning out, uh, learning astrology, like I said, when I was eight and stuff, what astrology and astronomy at the same time, actually, because oh, I was wow. literally looking at the planets there, their compositions, you know, et cetera, all of this kind of stuff. 
but I started out in Western astrology first. So everyone's probably heard of Linda Goodman's mm -hmm. Star Science, which is very, very famous, one of those seminal kind of books. So I learned all of that stuff off first, and that was a good grounding, uh, of course, then going into the Vedic. And my analogy for like the two is like this. It's like, although Western tropical astrology, astrology which we all use in the West, is younger yeah is younger than uh, vedic but i say it's like classical music we all know the tunes you know it's mozart and beethoven most people understand what a sun sign is etc stuff like that vedic astrology is more like jazz it's much more like jazz because there we it's like all of the semitones in between you've got nakshatra mm -hmm. which are asterisms star clusters two and a quarter nakshatras per sign or three energies per sign 27 nakshatras the moon spends one day in each one she sets up the whole cycles of your life the mahadasha sequence which is when planets have a dominant influence etc all the mythology gods goddesses there's all of this stuff has to be learned and they're all factors and they're all bona fide factors as well so you have to learn all that so it's kind of like you know, like how they say all all uh, great jazz musicians are classically trained. So, you know, when you think of like like John Coltrane or Nina Simone or, you know, that these think of like any jazz master, they learn the classical first and then that gives you the benchmark. And that's really what helped me understand the Vedic. Otherwise, it would have just been almost because it's another language. I mean, it's written. It, these yes. names are written in Sanskrit. <laughs> It's really a hard way to to read things, but it does get into the weeds. You did get into the weeds with mine. I like it. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. So when did tarot come into your liking? Good question. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd I'd had a little. I'd always had a little flirtation, I suppose, with tarot. Maybe you know, uh, from my in my twenties or whatever. I would say mainly when I was at university. I can't remember where I got my, oh, actually, no, I can't remember where I got my first tarot deck from. It was from this astrology stop, uh, shop in Covent Garden. It's quite a famous one. Obviously, I've forgotten its name now. But when you go to Covent Garden in London, there's a famous astrology shop there. And that's where I got my first uh, deck. But I would, I would mainly do it with friends. And, you know, we, you know, you know, shuffle, you know, pull the cards and then I'll, you know, be looking at the book and blah, 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 you know, so it was, it, I mean, it was still, it was still good, but I, I wasn't, I wasn't fluent, but then, and then I sort of like forgot about astrology for, I'm sorry, I forgot about tarot for a little bit. And then it was when I started doing collaborations with, uh, with other people and stuff mm. like that. And then once I really uh, applied myself to the tarot, uh, it, it, <sighs> That was it. I it, I just I just absorbed I just absorbed it, and I think because I'm so used to looking at little symbols on on a chart, because I have to be able to interpret someone's life just by a glyph in a box. You know, mm -hmm. you, there's very little information there when you actually look at a chart. So so for me, in a way, the the tarot, in many ways, it was actually a lot easier because the the symbolism is so rich. Also, the other kind of stuff comes in. And I think that's why I read the tarot cards a bit differently to everyone else. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, I love the way you read. It just mm -hmm. makes sense. And I was so delighted. Uh, you read uh, one of the, I was going to remember the card you read a certain way and ask you about it. But that might be just interesting between you and I offline. <laughs> was <laughs> we, it the we Empress? Have, we have people. Was uh, it the Empress card? It feels like it was a minor card. Oh. And um, so, stinky for instance, fish. the two, what's that? Uh, I call the Page of Cups Stinky Fish. Yes, I know. <laughs> that kind of stuff is just. Now, why do you call it Stinky Fish? What's because it? It, because the 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 page of the page of cups, um, or I mean, as we know, all of the page suite or suits yeah. rather, they, they all deal with messaging and stuff like that. But the reason why, I could, but the page of cups in general can be, it can just be surprising or unpleasant news. But what I often find is that like, particularly, obviously we've been reading so much on political tarot now, haven't yeah, we, us yeah, all yeah. readers. 
when that card comes up, I would be like, because it would be something stinks. It would be a message that was unsavory in some kind of way. And it would just, it would just be consistent. Whenever I, the page of cups would come up and you'll be reading on something, then a week or two later, that unsavory news as it were would, would, would come out and that's why i started calling it stinky fish oh my god see ladies and gentlemen remember that this is how you develop your own voice your own voice with the tarot and interpret that's what i did i work on the hotlines uh and so the two of the two of swords means basically what it means but then it will it will morph into something else and when i study the uh the court cards, I put characters to them, like the um, yes. like the uh, Page of Swords is Sheldon Cooper from the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> Even though oh. Sheldon Cooper was a grown man, but he had this adolescent, and wait a know. minute, they would all want to go to the movies, but he had to say, wait a minute, we've got to think things through, you know, and hold up the whole show. So that's how I get into uh, my... Uh, my uh, and then, of course, reverse uh, Queen of Swords is always Judge Judy. <laughs> <laughs> a shadow side of Judge Judy. <laughs> so, but it's fun. Everybody just, uh, you'll, you'll get to have a, uh, a relationship with these cards and you'll get a lot better with them. You were going to say something? Perfect. Um, just someone wrote in the comments, they were asking me if I, if I learned Sanskrit and stuff like that, that mm -hmm. before. No, I, I read... In, uh, books translated into uh, English about Vedic astrology and I've done lots of training with Vedic astrologers and l looked at so many astrologers and I still do but a lot of the names the names of the planets and stuff are, are in Sanskrit so I didn't learn Sanskrit in order to learn Vedic astrology you, you've got books in them in English but you do have to deal with a lot of Sanskrit like the names for example the nakshatras they're they're all like Shatabishak, for example, for example, is in, in Aquarius. Yes, yeah, a section in Aquarius or Revity is at the end of Pisces, you know, so you have to learn all the Sanskrit names. This is true. That's amazing. Thank you for catching that because my, um, I should have mentioned that my comments froze. So now I'm back on track. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much. All right. How many places are, uh, have you lived in the world? I mean, I have you lived in other places of the world? You seem so uh, worldly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, actually, funny enough, in terms of living uh, places, I've always, um, I've always lived in London. So I live in a, a borough of London called Hackney. So I grew up in, uh, in North Hackney, a place called Stoke Newington which always had lots of parks and stuff like that. And it's got a very famous cemetery called Alb Albany, Albany Park. And it's this Victorian cemetery. It's huge. And me being the strange kid that the I was. Kid. <laughs> yeah, I used to love going through. But this, but I mean, when I, it's really beautiful. I mean, we're talking, it's full of angels, um, these fantastical mausoleums, things you know cut full of sculptures and gardens and stuff like that it was a little bit spooky of course but it's 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 abney park if anyone kind of googles it stoke newington um north london so i grew up there then i uh spent uh till i was about 11 12 and i live in the area that i'm in now which is opposite uh, a place called london fields which has become very trendy hackney's gone through a huge journey no one wanted to live here before and um, now they all do. Uh, so I've always lived here, but I, I've always been interested in travel. So I do like to go on adventures. My granddad was American, so I've been to America, you know, really quite a lot. My last big adventure, proper adventure in America was 2019. So I went through 22 states in America. Yeah, wow. I went through 22 states, uh, stayed in 11 of them. And at that point, I think that was my fifth visit to America. So I've always spent a lot of time in, in New York, uh, which has always been one of my favorite cities. New York and Chicago, I'd say, are, yeah. are some of my favorites. But I've been to Russia. I have, oh. I have been to Russia, believe it or not. So 
Yes, I've been to, you know, Moscow, St. Petersburg, which is just astonishingly beautiful. Then a mm. place called Novosibirsk, which is the middle of Siberia for a solar eclipse. How appropriate. We've got a, this huge wow. one coming up. Yes. But I had, I was, yeah, it was extraordinary. So 2008, I went there with one of my good friends, Gustav. I had dreadlocks at the time. People were literally pulling on me for photographs. So people were like, photo projasta, photo projasta, you know, all the <laughs> The all oddity. The with the <laughs> yeah, I was just extremely ex exotic. And um, yeah. I remember that one time I got off the Trans-Siberian <laughs> Railway, you know, they give you time to stretch your legs. And I always call it my Alfred Hitchcock moment because I got <laughs> off the platform and we were halfway between Moscow and some place and it was like the onion domes you could see the traditional onion domes yeah. wherever this place was and i got off the platform and i stretched and i yawned and everyone on the platform suddenly stopped Stupid. and went like that yeah Serious? the whole platform stopped <laughs> so you can imagine and it was just like okay I'm thinking I'm gonna get back on the train now. <laughs> Are you were you I mean what did you go through with that? I mean, did you were you it delighted? Was, was it interesting? It was, was it queer? Yeah. Was it what it happened? It was the weirdest thing in my whole life. One of the one of the weirdest yeah. things in my whole life. I've never had a whole platform of people. We're talking about 50 or 60 people just wow. stop in their tracks because it may as well have been an alien that had stepped off yeah. the train. Because they genuinely, I could tell they had not seen anyone like me in their ne neck of the woods. And it was truly astonishing for them. I had people surreptitiously taking photographs <laughs> of me, pretend, pretending to take a photograph of some old poster on the wall put up by <laughs> Lenin. You're like, come on, that's been there since the fall of, <laughs> before the burning wall. You know what I mean? Um, but there you are. You know, I had a, a, a moment of that. Uh, when I was younger, I drove the Alcan, which is <clears throat> the long road between America and a Alaska. It goes in and out of the Yukon several times. And there's a thing called the mile post. It's a, you get it before you start the drive and it'll tell you what to do, where to go and what to avoid. And there is one place that uh, in the book, I turned the page and it said, you're coming upon a town by the name of Devil's Paw. Do not stop. So I had to stop, figuring if I survived it, it would make a great story. But the thing is, is that I went into this one, it wasn't much of a town, went into this place where you get candy or something like that. And I just walked in. Everything had a layer of dust on it, but it's the Alcan, right? So that's okay. But everybody in the place stopped whatever they were doing, even mid sip of a coffee to look at me. So I had one moment of what you experienced, but yeah. I got out of there. <laughs> Devil spa. Yeah. I don't blame you. And, and I've been to lots of other places as well, like all, all over Europe. So of course, you know, the, cause in London, Europe is much closer. So of course, you know, you, you know France you know Holland Norway Sweden Denmark mm. I've been to Italy about 12 or 13 times that's one of my favorites Greece um so I I, I even forget I have to put them on, on 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 the maps where I've been and of course you know the states a lot like I said before and, and now of course Mexico and hopefully next year Costa Rica and every once in a while I, I so I do like I love cultures I love people um growing up in hackney it was very uh, lots of different um ethnicities and blends of people different classes of people so i really do like humanity and stuff like that and mm -hmm. i like taking myself on adventures and going out of my comfort zone from time to time that's what makes you a great advisor you can <laughs> meet you can really meet people where they are i think that's great so um oh how does spirit speak to you do you hear, see, feel? Is there any touching going on? Ah, oh, good question. Well, it's it's really interesting because you know, like like most people have guides and stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. And for me, my guides genuinely are the planets. 
Mm -hmm. I tune in with them. <laughs> and it literally, like, it comes through in consultations and, and stuff like that. I've been told I do have guides, but it's my clients that are psychic. When they've read me, they've seen, like, things or people around me that I'm not necessarily mm -hmm. aware of. So there's a client of mine, very psychic client, and um, uh, she came back to me for a consultation. It had been a little while since I'd seen her. She, she's got gifts and stuff like that. And when she, between the time that that we had, it was probably a couple of years, and she said, you have so many animals around you. So, uh, so she said um, that I had birds. There was even like a beetle. There was a centipede. There was an eagle, which is my spirit animal, by the way. So, uh, like bald eagle, gold e golden eagle. That's that's like like my sort of like totem spirit animal, as it were. But she said there's a huge bear around you. She said like a bear. She said there's this big bear around you, sort of protecting you and giving you advice and stuff like that. And I knew immediately what she meant. She's like, well, I, she's like, I can't understand it. It's this, this, this big bear and it gives you advice and it gives you, you know, and it helps you with your astrology and all of that kind of stuff. And I knew what she'd meant. What she was picking up on was Ursa, the constellation called Ursa Major. There's a constellation called Ursa Major and it means the big, it means the big bear. Oh, the big bear. And it's very close. Yeah, it's very close to the Big Dipper. And because part of so much of my energy is like Arcturian. I've, been, I've had many, many of my clients say this, but uh, the star Arcturus is very close to the Big Dipper and the Big Bear. So when she was reading Ursa, the, the Big Bear around me, I was like, oh my goodness, that's the protection from the constellation. I, yeah. I knew what she meant. She didn't know what she meant, but I, I twigged. I was like, oh my gosh. So yeah, there you are. Those oh, are my guys. It planets stars <laughs> the stars octuri there's very few octurians on the planet but but you may not think that because you draw them in <laughs> you'll draw octurians in around you mm -hmm. but uh mm -hmm. awesome that is so cool um so i would like to talk about your wonderful hogarth archetypal spread i don't know if that's the name of it but you developed a, a spread that looks quite interesting and i'm curious um, how you came upon that oh good question mm -hmm. so uh what i call it is i call it the archetypal blueprint so that's what i call it and that used to be the name of my website actually until something went weird uh, with it and i can't remember and i had to change it to my YouTube channel, which of course is Hogarth's Global Astrology. But that, um, that was a remarkable thing. So that came to me, the idea came to me, I think it was about six, seven years ago now, hmm. must be. Let's say six years, pardon me, six years ago to be on the safe side, because I can't remember exactly. And, you know, I knew my Western astrology and stuff at that point, and I was really starting to get into, into the Vedic. And I had this massive download that it just came in a flash. And it, it was from Uranus. It was it was Uranian. I, I, and it was like, because the planet Uranus deals with like visions of the future, pioneer, you know, sudden flashes and insights. And I remember I literally ran to my laptop to get it down, this technique. And I kind of like codified it, got it, got it, got it all down. And I think it was because of my astrology work and because of my tarot work, I came up with this 12 house system. Now, I think there may be one or two other people that um, may have a 12 house system or a different house system. And I do need to give a credit and a shout out to Caroline Mace, of course, because oh, I yes. use her deck. Yeah. So, you yes. know, I yeah. always like to credit my sources. And I think that's important, isn't it? As us YouTubers, I don't see it enough. I think. I know it. I know I can tell when people have got something, an idea from someone else, and they don't give a credit. Oh. And I, I think they should. I think it's. I think it's because we're all learning from each other. So of course she's come up with this this remarkable her remarkable deck, 
but um but my 12 house system the way i use it is uniquely is uniquely mine and i've just found it is just a great diagnostic tool and it for me it is it's not only for me for my clients as well it is alchemy something magical happens no two readings are ever the same they're always bespoke and unique to that person and i say to them look this might seem arrogant when i first say to you, this to you but I say every card is perfect because i get them to choose the card they tell me where to drop the token ah. so it's their higher self so i tell my clients it's your higher self that is trying to communicate to you today and i'm the conduit i'm the crystal i have to interpret the information but it's coming from them and it's just it's just a revelation and i and i say that combined with the um, astrology i think it's my best work and it seems to just transform people's lives literally they they transform by by even by the middle let alone the end wow wow and you offer that as a standalone service yeah so i have um, an archetypal so people can go for the astrology and the archetypes combined or they could just do the archetypes on its own but um but i try not to do too many of uh, too many of them because it, you can imagine it takes a tremendous amount of of energy because it's the archetypes flowing through the planets flowing through and it very uh, it's a two hour consultation and it goes like that M more often than not it often runs over so i love doing it but it does take a lot out of me yeah so when i practiced the tarot i would I mean, let me just do it this way when i practice my mediumship or um remote viewing i practice with a true crime story on tv Mm. that I'd never heard before, but I know it's true. Mm -hmm. And I would pause the TV and then move into what, predict where the body is and you're going, somebody's going to die, right? Uh, and so that's how I practice uh, my developing my skills. How did mm. you practice what, what that was? In other words, you had it as a download, you fine tuned it. Did you go to strangers to practice on friends to practice on? Uh, because there's a jump, there's a jump between theory and practice. What was that jump off for you? Uh, I did, I did archetypal readings for uh, friends at, at the start, friends and like work colleagues uh, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So that's where I could, you know, you know, test, test out the technique. And, and I, I mean, I knew immediately that it would work. Yes. And I also yeah. structure it like, um, I, I structure it like, like a company, like, so the archetypal blueprint is like, so house number one is the CEO, for example, who's running the whole company. That's whatever archetype falls there. That is what everyone else sees. And that's that person's main priority. And then like the second house placement, it deals with finance. I call it, it it's, it's like the uh, finance and resources department, but also deals with education and family. So I overlay the meanings, the astrological meanings of the houses, but like a business structure. Uh -huh, so like cool. the third house, for example, is communications of all kinds, but I call it the PR department. So whatever <laughs> card falls there, that is the archetype um, that represents their speech. And I allow my clients to uh, guess at the first three um, archetypes that they think they are, but I always tell them, don't worry if you're if you're wrong because most people are and the out of the hundreds of times i've done this consultation the maximum anyone's been able to get out of 12 was four four wow. out of 12 <clears throat> and that was uncanny that's never that's never happened uh again so it's almost impossible because it's your higher self bringing bringing the message down so um yeah but i i practiced with friends and work colleagues first for a little while and then after a while it's just sheer just experience exactly. i would say yeah 80 percent, 85 percent of what i've learned has been in the saddle doing consultations day in day out it's the best best it teaching. is 
It really is. It really is. I learned a lot about my craft doing that that way. So bravo. Now you, um, you're, you have or are writing a book, and I'd like to know what it's about and what your dreams are, what you hope to see come about. Oh, oh these, these are great questions. I must say, they're great questions. <laughs> you thank fascinate you. me. You absolutely fascinate oh, me. Thank, thank you. That's, that's very kind. Mm. Um, so the book is already written. So I, ugh, when was I writing the book? Uh, what we we're in 2024 now, aren't we? So I would say I think I was writing the book from maybe half of 2022 going into 2023, something like that. It's all all, all a bit foggy now because I was so busy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, writing it, then I workshopped it as well. So I sent it to about 50 of my clients. They gave me feedback on things to update or things that I uh, could look at. I got them to check for any typos, anything like that. But I've got very wow. sort of like 50 yeah, people. So, yeah, yeah, about about yeah, about about 50 people. And because I've written books before actually, I, I wrote histo- I've written historical adventure fiction before. So I I've, I've, I've been through it's not my first rodeo. So technically oh. this book will actually be my fifth because there was a children's book I illustrated and that was a bit of a disaster. And uh, like, there's been lots of ups and downs to spit a picture. Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So the book is so the book is written and what I'm working on now is the front cover. So I came up with a, a basic design for the front cover, but I'm not a book cover designer. Yeah, that's a whole different skill set. So recently, I've just gone back to the designer that designed my first, uh, the book covers for my first two books, and she did a fantastic job. So I've gone back to her again. But I, one second here, I can show you, I don't know what she's going to come up with. Yeah. But I am, I am an illustrator, as you guys probably know, already, in my own right. So I'll show you. So I always start with pencil and pen sketches first so if we look here this was one of the sketches like this is how i wanted let me um, wait a minute i'm gonna make you full hold on here ah thank you so if we look here so this is a sketch this is a sketch of how i wanted the the book to potentially look what the cover designer will come up with i don't know but that was the sketch and then from that i then went to where's the original one so i've got so many there we are i then went to this so you can imagine like so here the text would be here name and stuff there but i'm gonna let the designer imagine and put in i've given her detailed notes of what i would like things to look like but she has to come up obviously with that but the book is full of like i really wanted to put my own illustrations in so this is one of my ones that i just finished on the nakshatras so you can see here this shows these are all the names in sanskrit these are gandanta points these are the royal persian stars as you can see there and all these different things to help people understand how the planets work and the cycle of the yugas i love this illustration as well and so that just gives you an example because so much stuff is computer generated today isn't it you 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 can you can put yourself back in (laughs) thank you i'm here (laughs) yeah if you can imagine so much is uh, computer generated today isn't it now I'm, i'm not criticizing it per se but what i've done is i have made videos of myself doing my own artwork so A, people know it is me. B, I have a historical record because the way AI is going, and I've been talking as well, I've been warning people about deep fakes. How interesting, yeah? Uh, mm. Last 18 months I've been saying, we're gonna have to look out for deep fakes in the world because Neptune is now in Pisces. And I just wanted to, people to see that I am the author of my own work but not only that when something is made by hand it just has a different quality a different feel so this book will have those illustrations and they really are my illustrations and I I wanted people to be able to 
see those and, and enjoy they those. They are magnificent. I can see those illustrations mm -hmm. on wall hangings <laughs> and <laughs> T-shirts. <laughs> I mean, it's just magnificent what you've been able to do. That's wonderful. But I know what you mean about AI when I finished my... I have a book coming out next in a while and it was um, at, at the front of the book when it says the is been and all and the, and the introduction, the very last sentence is um, this book was written without the use of AI. And then I wrote not one word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. but there's yeah AI track trackers and stuff like that now that are going to save us from that. Uh, the plagiarism oh, and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they're starting to do a, a a website one, so there's this plagiarism and uh, AI tracking. So there's some there's some bumper cars, you know, bumpers along the way that's coming yeah. around. They're saying Amazon has had to kind of even change its uh, policies and stuff because they said so many people are using AI to write books now. And look, mm -hmm. uh, no, I'm, I'm not completely anti-AI because I've had dreams in the future of how I could use it, it, it for a really positive thing. But a lot of people, I mean, they're putting in because the, because the AI, they just put in a few prompts and they say, mm -hmm. oh, write me a book on that. And it's cheating. I'm sorry, yeah. but it is. It's it's not. Yeah. It's not. It's not you. And and there is a very important process that every human being goes through whenever they publish something, particularly when it's like a long form book. Mm -hmm. And the process in of itself is a very very important and special process for each person. And becoming an author really is it really is a birthing process, mm -hmm. even if you don't publish it. And I think J.K. Rowling said something once upon a time. I know she's been a bit blacklisted these days, hasn't she? Bless her. But um, but when she was giving her talks and conferences, she says writing a book, even if you don't publish it, it is still an achievement and it's still worth doing. And she's absolutely right. Yeah. It's it's yeah. another form of alchemy. So, but when you do it with AI, it's not the same. You, you're right. not an author if you've, if you've used AI to write a whole book for you. Right, not to write a whole book. There was one um, article I was asked uh, to write, and I had the key points in my head. You know, you know how you build it, and so I ran the concept through a prompt, what I wanted to convey. I want to say this, I want to say that. And at the end of the day, the client, the customer, the reader will, will learn this ABC. And AI gave me other headings that I didn't even remember I could put in, you know, when, <laughs> when you're, when someone really knows their work well, they will start with uh, basics and then maybe jump too fast to the to the mm -hmm. experienced. And so uh, anyway, that helped me. But I didn't like copy and paste that into yeah. it, but it sure helped. It oh, sure yeah. Helped. I, think it, I, th I, think, I think it can be a good aid <clears throat> and it can be an aid memoir. Mm -hmm. But I think when the AI does all the writing, then yeah. you, you can't call it your own work, just yeah. like with photographs or artwork it, it, if you're prompting a computer and it produces a beautiful artwork the algorithm has produced has produced that do you know what i mean sure. so i'm a bit I of a know. purist that way <laughs> i love that you are because your work shows it i mean that those illustrations i can't wait to i can't Thank wait you. to buy them <laughs> i'll buy your book too but those illustrations are great so um the last question is what is your north star your goal at the moment what are the specific ways what are the f specific things we can do as your audience as your fans that to support you to uh, to your goal you know to quicken your goal what what do you oh, hope to be great question these are honestly honestly Deborah, <laughs> i have to thank you for these these yeah. fabulous questions because they're very thoughtful and they they prompt me to to think as well. Yeah. So um, first of all, like we're we're all here on on uh, our journey together as humanity, and we're all contributing 
our unique consciousness to that. One of the things that I found, and this is what I'm looking forward to uh, when I get people together on, on my retreat, because I'm having my first retreat in oh, Santa right. Fe in, in August, 26th to the 30th of August uh, this year. So we're going to be in Santa Fe, seeing all the great sights and stuff, and I'll be doing the astrology in the mornings. And one of the things what I found, uh, the majority of my clients, irrespective of their age, but the, the vast majority of my clients will have either their ascendant or one or two planets or more conjunct a certain star in the sky. I kid you not. Serious? These are natal charts? Oh, in no. people's natal charts. It's incredible. And that star <laughs> is called Regulus. Yeah, Regulus. Oh. So I literally, I had to, uh, if I just uh, indulge me, as I quickly go back to the illustration again, I can show you which one, because it's one of the royal Persian stars. Here we are. So where's Regulus on here? Here we are. So here I put in here, here's Regulus. So these are the, 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 the point, the, the Persian royal stars so you've got so you've got oh thank you you've, you've put, put me on the mm -hmm. bigger thing so here so you've got antar uh, no sorry where am i where am i let me get this right so we have got here we are so we've got al aldebaran sorry you've got antares here star of autumn but basically regulus is the star of summer it's this one so about 85 percent of my clients will have either their ascendant or planets conjunct that star and it sits in sidereal leo literally about 85 percent. so in terms of my guiding star as it were literally is regulus uh, my yeah my jupiter is conjunct that star anytime you've got a, a, an orb an orb is how near or far something is from some something else Five degree orb is is close. Three degrees or less is a big hit, and my Jupiter is at two is at eight degrees of Regulus. Sorry, at eight degrees of sidereal uh, Leo, and Regulus goes from four to six degrees, so it's very very close. But for about eighty five percent, but let's say eighty percent of my clients, I think it is more. They will have their ascendant or planets in the same place, irrespective of their age. And I've read charts for people that are, you know, 16 up to age 93 is my eldest client. And within that age range, the majority of them will have a planet conjunct that star, but most of them are born... Um, in the mid to later 1950s or early 60s and a lot of them have pluto conjunct regulus which is even more profound because they're here for major ancestral clearing for their whole mm. bloodlines yeah. oh wow yeah. that's amazing so my, thank you so my north star really is regulus so how can people help of course you know liking and subscribing to the channel you know um sharing videos and stuff of course buying books and stuff when they're there because i've got much bigger ambitions as well there's going to be i want to do a, a a bejeweled uh pop-up book so i'm going to do so this book that i've written which is called the candid guide to neo-vedic astrology <clears throat> i'm going to turn it into a bejeweled kind of pop-up book so I'll show you uh, here. Sorry, I'm getting what you get me getting all the drawings out. But I'll just show it. you this. So here. here's one. This is an illustrated front cover here. In fact, let me take it out because otherwise it's a bit too shiny. So <clears throat> this is something that I've completed. Oh, I can't remember when I did it. A year and a half ago now. <clears throat> so this will be actually the front cover. So here, this would be all of this stuff where you see it's silver. This would be in platinum. These would be in real gemstones, so that would be real sapphire. This would be inlaid with, like, mother of pearl. Uh, no, sorry, this is mother of pearl. This would No, this is mother of pearl, sorry. Platinum, sapphires, gold. Here you've got the signs of the zodiac and the padders going around. Each 
uh, sign has its allotted gemstone. So Aries has coral, Taurus has diamond. And I actually took this to a jeweler. And here you can see where I've done the patent on the back, the notes on the back. So I patented this design. I would like it to be this size. And imagine it would open up like this. If you look here, it would open up here. That was what it would, what it would look like. Now, obviously not everyone is going to be able to afford diamonds and, you know, gold and <laughs> all That's of this amazing. stuff. That's amazing. Thank you. So there will be like a cardboard version of it. But that for me is the next stage. So I might have to crowdfund that because it's all about bringing everyone back into alignment. Western astrology works, of course. And yeah. I grew up in Western. Mm -hmm. But the Vedic is sidereal. We actually take that movement of the stars into account. So, yeah, I want to take this to the next, the next level. So that would be the project after the books projects <laughs> oh wow that is amazing just amazing you're such a great artist and i can really see that so you'll let us know i'm sure or i'll have you back on or we'll shout it from the <laughs> rooftops about a gofundme or <laughs> or something like that to get you going on that idea because i can yeah. see it in a museum i can see it in a <laughs> i can see that that's what displayed I want. with yeah i can see you in a museum that's wonderful uh, so yeah, we need to like subscribe comment share and uh request a reading uh promote promote you uh see you on other channels yeah i mean yeah, people thank you Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm taking most of May off. I think I've only got a couple of consultations in, in May because sometimes, I, you know, I just need to kind of just take a break energetically yeah. because I really do channel like the energy of the planets and stuff. And and then it's 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 coming up with bespoke solutions for that for for that person. As you know, you've had a co consultation with me. So each one is unique. Even when the same person comes back several times, each reading is is unique. So I'll be taking like some time off in May. So I think there might be April may have sold out, but it's worth having a look. Uh, may, you should see that's blocked out. So June, July, and then I'll be off in August as well. So I'm off in August and then a bit of September. But, you know, May, June, July, there, there'll be spaces there. If people are interested awesome. and it's global astrology. And it all helps. So liking, subscribing, yeah. and of course, buying books and stuff, it all helps with that bigger vision. That's for sure. How uh, Now, is there still room for your retreat? No. Is that closed off? Uh, I think, I think that because, um, te well, technically it's sold out, but then some people have had some unexpected events. Oh. So one person had an un un unexpected event. Yeah, like they're, they're, they were planning to drive down. Their car is completely blown out. So the repair is costing them a lot of money, which has affected, I think, their budget, you know, for, for, for the retreat because they were going to drive down. So I think there may be one space left. Uh, how could they find that out? It will be – it's on Trova Trip. But if they click on some of my videos, like – in the video description, it will be in there. There'll be a link. So if they look up Trova Trip, Trip or Hogarth's Vedic Astrology Santa Fe, it will probably come up in Google that way. And I think okay. there might be one. There might be one place left. So it was sold out, but the person just emailed me. I don't know if they've had to cancel yet, but take a look, and there might be one space. But there's a wait list as well, and that has been useful. So. Things okay. happen, you know, such yeah. as life. Things happen. You're brave, brave guy. I'd love that. I, I don't know if I could do what you do. Uh, you know, manage all those people. Uh, <laughs> I would go for the food, though. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, lot, yeah, it's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> yes. It sure is. But I love oh, it. Though. I admire you so much. I cannot thank you enough for coming on my show. I've admired you uh, when I first saw you on somewhere, and I just, wanted that reading and followed your guidance found success and wanted to have you on to find out more about you and uh thank you pretty dynamic i'm guy. glad it worked out i saw it in your i saw it in your chart it was it uh, was there that's why i said go for it 
And you've been a very, you've been an excellent host. So thank you. You've done a great job with your channel. You've got some really, some really slick stuff going on. Mine feels quite basic by comparison. (laughs) I've been jumping around and doing different things, not sticking to any, any one thing, but heck, that's part of my charm. (laughs) Yeah, indeed. And I've got your cards, by the way, I was literally just looking for them. You know, your, your, your target. And I do not know what what i've done with them and i was well they'll they'll resurface but i wanted to yeah you know i whenever i give a deck away it it doesn't have to be your favorite you don't have to use them you can give them to someone else it's full it would just full heart (laughs) so gorgeous uh, literally i'm trying to find the box what on earth have i done with the box (laughs) Literally, thing- I have it nearby, and I don't know what I've done with the box, but it was it, they look like gorgeous cards, so maybe I'll, I'll yeah. use them on my So that was show. Kate Kate Matthews was the illustrator, and she's native, uh, but she made sure all of the cards had different races and abilities, and oh, wow. it uh, makes for – I made it because for the busy hotline, the busy reader – and I know everyone has done this. I don't care how experienced you are. You th- you you put a throw down and your mind goes blank. There's no <laughs> way you can get anywhere with this. And so you say, allow me to speak with spirit. You know, you get that pause and say, come on, come on, come on. The uh, the uh, There's clues on each card to point oh. you into that direction. And all you have to do is go through a few cards to get into the room of knowing and that's when the epiphanies mm. card so that was oh. my uh, objective and thank you for letting me talk about that and uh, thank you everyone for being so generous and kind somebody i think somebody put into the chat your uh, some information about you but nonetheless i'm going to find your link to to your your site and information and i will see that that's in the show notes and i want to thank you so much for stopping by and i'm going to da 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 da, da i'm gonna dance us off dance <laughs> us off so we'll see everybody come on thank dance you so us much off for having me. It's, been, it's been a pleasure and thank you everyone for joining us as well thanks thank so much you so much <laughs>